Welcome back to Space Engineers. I've been doing some digging, got lots of mining done down here, undercutting our main platform. Uh, I've started to get hit ice and rock here. Unfortunately, our little mining ship, where are you? Uh, there you are. Um, it doesn't have the auto ejector setup that we did for this one. So if I want to do rock, uh, in fact, is this got the auto ejector? No, maybe it's the one on Earth. It must be the one on Earth. Um, that's fine. Uh, but uh, I don't have anything to reject rock, so we may have to build something into our station to do that. But today we're not going to worry about the mining because that can be done mostly off camera. And I'll just clear out more and more space. You can see I'm just about hitting some rock there. So if I start to push this way, you'll see we hit plut uh, plutonium, platinum, and then out towards the entrance. So that's that's the way we're actually going to be going with this and clearing out this area at the bottom so that uh, you know we can get towards our exit here. We've got some ice, some platinum, and then just the rest is rock, and we'll have to get rid of the rock, probably with right-click mode, although we may even just be able to build a larger miner at that point. Anyway, that's not what today's episode is going to be about. I'm going to make a couple of quick amends uh, to last episode. First of all, uh, we, as I was told by a commenter, thank you very much, we don't actually need these ones on this side. I'm always thinking in terms of inputs and outputs to machines after playing things like Stationeers, and uh, Space Engineers just isn't that fussy. Um, as long as there is a route through a machine and through a junction, it apparently should unload just fine. And we should be able to test that just by going to here. And see, it's still disappearing just fine. So we only need the junctions at the back. And we also here, this is basically sending our ingots this way. We don't necessarily need that if... I'm not sure I'm going to like just clearing this space, but let me clear this one. There we go. And at least we can see it from, from underneath. And uh, let's just put that back, actually. So I've got something to stand on. Uh, so then underneath here, we should be able to see... Yeah, that's this bait. Let's just make sure that's... Well, I'm out of steel plates. In any case, that's the actual gap we've got to go up into our small cargo can. And we can then just move this setup. Uh, we can't remove this block yet, because that's how the, the medical station gets access to other things for us to refill, like, for example, O2 and H2. And once it refills with energy, there it goes. So yes, we still need that block, but we don't necessarily need these if we're th these ones if we're willing to go around. Meteor storm inbound. Thank you. Um, so do we have a route already under here? I don't think I've mined quite far enough just yet. Uh, what we could do is just have something in line with this sorter right underneath here, pointing straight down. So let's just cut the way through the floor. Yeah, you see, there's still ore there. It's very, it's the very edge of where we're cutting. So I could clear that out manually. But yeah, then, then we could actually send a, uh, a con um, conveyor underneath there. And that will clear this line out. We still have this one, but that's something else entirely. Um, we could temporarily move that sort of underneath and then send it straight down and then underneath again. So I won't show too much of that on camera, and that's not the topic of this episode. Anyway, I do actually want to think about power out here. So you'll see we've got our single solar panel. It helps, but, you know, we've got a reactor that's doing most of the work. But if we've got something out here, you can see with the shape of the asteroid, this entrance is actually sticking out quite a ways. So what I was figuring we could do is start to build downwards off this, so that the entryway isn't isn't um, isn't obstructed, if you like. So this is the point of the bottom of our entrance right here. So this isn't uh, obstructed. So we're going to build down, and then maybe we'll do some solar tracking. Um, now, no, if you've been watching my space uh, my stationeers series, solar tracking may be like again, <laughs> but it's much much easier to do in Space Engineers, in fact much easier to do in Space Engineers than it is in Stationeers. So bear with me, uh, I promise it won't be terrible and uh, you will need access to the workshop because it's not something that's built into the game but it is very easily moddable. And I had some steel plates, oh, okay. And that doesn't mean I need to actually build more, that is fine. Um, Let's just make sure I click hide empty. Thanks very much for the commenter that mentioned about that. And just grab some steel plate. We don't have to worry too much about how many because we're just not going to worry about um, doing it otherwise. So we need to clear the, the entire asteroid. 
and we need to be far enough out of the way so that whatever size platform we build out here needs to be able to turn in both axes so turn horizontally and vertically so let's say about shall we say right there on that block seems reasonable and then of course this being space engineers uh, we should just be able to hold down and well not hold down but continually click while backing up how does that look how far away from the asteroid is that well, that's reasonable reasonable uh, the only problem that out here really is that um that meteors can actually hit the infrastructure but that's the price you pay unfortunately and unfortunately if it blocks <laughs> yeah if the meteor hits too too much if we've only got a single column supporting this then if a meteor hits we are in problem territory so why don't we just uh do something like uh a bucket, well whoops not there mm, whoops why don't we just be able to put something like a block of five that should be okay and then we can go back up this way just to give ourselves a little bit of uh insurance not that it'll help particularly if uh, it hits the main beam we're about to actually deal with but that's okay um this is just some infrastructure that we can fill in and weld up later with a welding ship that i've yet to build okay so from this i'm going to build a narrow sort of column and whoops again <laughs> there we go i'm gonna build a narrow column and then what we're going to need to do is build arms or yeah maybe solar arms maybe a couple more we're also going to need a rotor so let's just grab an um i don't think we need an we better build an advanced rotor yeah that we'll come back to why later but uh for now let's just use an advanced rotor and assume that that's the case so we've got a rotor here and then we're going to build on top of that and then we can put arms this way uh is five gonna be enough maybe seven maybe nine okay that seems reasonable then uh we're going to put some more rotors so let's get a rotor this way and a rotor this way and now is the final section now the final section i'd recommend using junctions next the reason why maybe come clear later uh well in fact no, we can discuss it now uh we can put oxygen farms on this i think and as long as it gets sunlight they should be okay uh will this be able to swing around though i can't build it too large because it won't won't swing around we may be better making the middle shorter but that's no problem i can always adjust it later if we need to uh, and then just um however many so let's say four does that have that looks like it'll be okay all right there we go and then on top of those you want to put your solar panels doesn't matter how you put them down it's not really much of an issue uh have i got enough fuel yet that's fine so uh, we can build these with steel plates so one two across the other side three four then we can also put them underneath and we're probably going to flip them around again one two now this is starting to look a lot like the international space station i realize but that's good if they've if they've laid out solar panels like this i don't mind too much <laughs> i don't mind uh taking that with us so what we'll then probably do is add more solar panels on the top this is why i moved it out four or five blocks because we may want to put one you know sort of right here that kind of thing but we can extend that later it's not going to make any difference to the whole setup regardless and um that's why we may be able to get away with a smaller beam here just a couple instead of four because we'll have these oxygen farms here uh, later so we now need to build that up and uh before we do that um well the sun's gonna go behind there so i think i'm gonna go and build that up without um 
making you watch me go in and grab stuff for a while. Let me just see what I actually need for this. So, solar cells, computers, large steel tubes, construction components, fine. I'll go and get this sorted and come back once we've built this up a little bit more. Okay, so this thing is built, and as you can see, the rotors can turn things just fine. Uh, they're actually rotating clockwise slightly at the moment. I've just been doing a little bit of testing. So, uh, if I put in a programmable block in place and rotate it... Uh, <laughs> well, there we go. Let's put it there. Just so it's easy enough for us to see things happening if we can edit things down here. I uh, need a bit of steel plate, but it's still functional. We can head in here and you'll see I've um, named... Well, I've got a block here. That's our block, uh, a group here that has these three rotors that we created. The one in the middle, which is the horizontal rotor, and then the two on either side, which are going to rotate the, the arms, if you like, about the long axis of the whole beam. Okay, so in here, we can call this whatever we want, but uh, let's just go into this and edit. Uh, we're going to browse scripts, and the one I've chosen on the workshop is called Izzy's, I-S-Y, apostrophe S. Solar alignment script. Now you see I've got quite a few scripts in here, solar max power and other things. A lot of these I've had for years and I'm not sure whether a lot of them are actually working. I need to do a lot of checking there. So uh, in the meantime, um, solar alignment script, press OK. I'm going to press <clears throat> check code, compilation and OK. And that I think should be it if we press run. You'll see there is a solar alignment script here saying running. Statistics for eight solar panels that it may have some problems with the fact that I've got a solar panel up here So maybe we'll just delete that one And I get a lot of stuff back anyway And why don't we just make sure one over here is actually complete There we go I'm gonna be short on solar cells aren't I? Okay, fair enough so, have you taken control of rotation yet? I think it has. Uh, wasn't this rotating the other way? Hmm, we'll soon see. Because if all the solar panels turn to face the sun, <laughs> we know whether it's actually working or not. Uh, I may need to up the speed somewhat. Yeah, it's rotating, but that may not be fast enough. So, if you just go in here, go to our rotors, and then let's... What's the speed? So let's say the velocity is up to, I don't know, 6 RPM. Ah, it's being controlled by something else, clearly. So I think the uh, the script is actually doing it. Fine. So it's rotating towards the sun. Will it stop once it gets pointed at the sun? I think that's... I've got to figure that's going to be about right, around about there, right? Okay. And then hopefully the arms are going to start rotating, like anti-clockwise for this one, uh, anti-clockwise for that one as well. So let's see what happens when it gets close. I think that's close enough. And that one's starting to rotate towards the sun, as is this one. It's quite slow, so I appreciate you might not be able to see it on screen, but if I go along this side and stop moving, you'll see that they are rotating to face the sun-ish. <laughs> uh, they should get to the same angle I would have hoped uh, are they at the same angle are they still rotating let me just stop yeah it's one of the right still rotating so they're getting close to each other they should be identical and in any case we're getting four green lights there are four lights reference I'm sure some of you will get it <laughs> so you can see just how far off vertical we are this this is vertical these are now pointing to face the sun. I really like this approach. Isn't that much easier than station is? I know it's a lot less work and maybe there's a lot less reward for it, but we get free, essentially free power. I just need then to make some more solar uh, cells, essentially, so we can just actually reclaim all of this now. And let's head inwards. I want to make sure I don't cut off the, uh, the entire solar si uh, tracking setup we just built. Okay, and well, that seems reasonable. Uh, it's reasonably far below the entrance that it shouldn't cause any problems with any ships coming into dock. And uh, its rotation beam is probably 
enough that we can extend this by another four blocks easily. And we can probably go upwards like one, two, three panels without much of a problem. Uh, we just need to make the, the solar cells themselves. So let's just get in here somewhere. And let's get those. So solar cells production, if we've got enough for raw material, that is. Um, ooh, we're out of... Oh, inventory's full. <laughs> okay. So solar cells, let's just make quite a, a lot. And um, let's just put away... Oh, it's this cargo can that's full. Is that because it's got... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's got... Hmm, <laughs> 1,100 thousand <laughs> uh, iron essentially so um yeah we're gonna need another place to put iron at some point soon uh can we put it in the refinery for now it's gonna try and insert it back in here unfortunately <laughs> that's slightly annoying i'm going to be to build another cargo can aren't i that, that would just make more sense how much can I carry? Mm, 13,000. That's that's nothing compared to the amount that's stored there. Okay, uh, all right, we're going to need another cargo can. Uh, do I have space? <laughs> do I have space back here? Uh, not really. That is... Is that an... Uh, is this another car? Oh, that's the O2H2 generator. I can't put it in that. Oh, that's very annoying. Um... I guess we could replace that with a cargo can, assuming that I can get access to the parts now everything is full. Hmm. All right, there we go. Another container temporarily gets us out of the bind, hopefully. Um, can I access everything else from in here now? Yeah, starting to fill with yet more stuff. That's fine. And now are we out? Oh, we have, should have plenty of nickel. We just don't have any silicon. So in order to complete that, I'm going to need to go and mine silicon. I'm not going to do it this episode. I'll do it between them. You get the idea. It does work perfectly well. It, the sun is now going behind the asteroid. So what should happen, I think, according to the script, is that it will uh, reset the movement of this to where the sun should come back out. Well, that depends on when it first locked onto the sun and figured out where it was. So... That means it may need a bit of tweaking, but otherwise we've got solar setup, uh, solar tracking setup going. Uh, lastly, maybe we should just end by just sorting out this. Hopefully I'll have time to do so. Uh, in fact, we can just get rid of a lot of this. There we go. And same thing with this. And this. That looks a lot neater, doesn't it? A lot less obstructed, ignore that. And then we're going to want this sort of cleaned out. So we can just use the right clip mode, I think. And. Yep. Stop trying to grab. My grab boots keep trying to lock onto the, the walls. There we go. It was pretty much already done anyway. We got to that in the right place. Uh, I am going to need to continue mining out here. So I may have to leave this until I've done a bit more mining uh, with our craft but get the idea we've got uh, everything we need and on this side we need to go over a little bit so we need to get this and a little bit more there we go so we've got access to it now which is all we need and now we can just put our correct things in so we want a straight block there Then we'll come out and build a uh, corner tube. And then we just have to head all the way over there. So that's going to be one straight, one corner. Like that. And the rest should be obvious. I just have to reset up the sorter on the other side. Uh, to point downwards rather than uh, upwards. Uh, let's just see if I can get these sorter. And that noise that you're hearing, it's quite loud, is I think just these these uh, these arc furnaces. So maybe I should uh, bring that volume down. Someone asked me to bring the volume up, but uh, I think that may be a little bit too loud. Certainly for me, if it didn't deafen you. So uh, one second, let me just uh, correct that. 
Okay, hopefully that should be less of a problem now. And I uh, should be a little bit quieter. Let's just grab a sorter. Convey a sorter, put you here. And we need to rotate you to point down. And ideally some kind of panel, but uh, I can always get to it somewhere else. Do we have a panel? Mm, not easily. Can we get to it from below? Grab boots. Uh, uh, no, I don't have a panel on that. Should be the last sorter anyway. We should be able to do that quite easily. Let's head over here and control panel. Conveyor sorter five, I guess. So ingot sorter. And then we want a whitelist for all ingots. Add that. And that should now be done. We should just need to be able to connect the two up with uh, conveyor tubes. And that is straightforward. Okay, so that tube's now finished. We've got green lights down here, as you can see. Storm Meteor storm inbound, fair enough. So now this is quite neat. It's quite straightforward. And we can enclose it if we want to. But, you know, some kind of uh, just... Oh, I need more steel plate. <laughs> So grab some steel plate. Uh, where are you? Do I have any left? Maybe I don't. Let's just produce some. There we go. Just get the idea. We'll just surround this in armor. Something like that. That'll do for now. And there we go. That sort of thing. Um, easy for me to access the inventories if we need them, and if we don't need them, well, it doesn't really much matter then, does it? There we go. Now, uh, getting rid of this final one, I'm going to do this probably next episode or something. Feel free to let me know your ideas. What I think I'm going to do is, first of all, just detach that, and we're going to run straight down through the floor. I'm probably into this, well, we can't go into the same pipe necessarily, because this is sorting one way, so we'll need a second pipe over here somewhere. So I can shoot or pipe or whatever you want to call them, conveyor. Um, so we'll send everything maybe that is an ore downwards across through that pipe. And then maybe we'll have a split here. So we have a junction and then the... Well, we're going to need to go into the top of that or the back of that. So I think what I might do is enter the back. So we'll have a splitter with uh, the ferrous ores going in through the back of here, which then we can remove all of that at the top. And then the non ferrous ores, I think we're going to put the refinery from over there. It's two by three by four blocks. Probably we're going to put a row of them, maybe sort of either set back a little bit, which is, might be something we need to move all of that later, but maybe set back a little bit or maybe online with these. Uh, so two by three by four will be fine because that will come up to here, down to the floor. Three back, because the modules are on the back, remember, and they take up an extra block space, at least one, if not two, extra one. Okay, so, and that will mean we'll have a, a row of five of these. Um, we'll, you know, put a, another space on the end of them, just so that it looks... Oh, I need a bit more steel plate, but you get the idea. So it just looks symmetric there. And then we'll begin a row of refineries, and I think we'll... We can probably get by with two or three to start, something like that. Uh, that shouldn't be much of a problem. It'll take up the same amount of space, roughly, as these, just a bit further across. And then what we might do, remember we're going to have that splitter. What I might do is put another large cargo can up here to take the non ferrous ores as the buffer before the, the refineries. Of course, because this is uh, too, low, or too low compared to the refineries, what we may have to do is move this up a couple once this finishes processing all this iron. Which means I'm probably going to have to put another cargo can back here to contain the iron. Because this temporary thing with just these small <laughs> these small cargo cans, it's not going to cut it for very long. And then we'll have another uh, sort of container for containing our um, components. And that will keep everything nice and separately. And the components, we can get away with a small cargo can for now, but we may as well just build a large one. Uh, shouldn't be much of a problem either way. So, let me know what you think. That should clear out that space. This space, we can probably move the med bay back over here somewhere over this side. And that'll start to clear our entrance up, ready for this sort of superstructure to come in once we've got it. Lastly, 
we've got the assemblers. And feel free to comment below if you've got any ideas of where we can put the assemblers. We're going to need an array of them because they cooperate. Uh, you can set things them to build and they will happily group build quite easily. Normally I put that maybe on the other side of wherever our uh, cargo can with all the ingots is in. So maybe that's over there somewhere. Either way, we'll end up clearing up this entrance space. So I hope you like this episode. We've got solar tracking done. I'm not showing you much of the mining, but that's fine. Uh, it's a little bit boring. No, no pun intended, please, I'm sorry. Um, I really didn't mean that one. Uh, it's a little bit boring, uh, but we do have this setup, so that's a little bit more exciting this episode. And then we've got to figure out what we do with the rest of this entrance and maybe how we clear this out. At some point, I think we're going to have to just build a large ship to clear this out. It's It would take me so, so long with this thing. I could build a larger small ship by putting lots of drill heads in front of it, but as it is... This thing fills up with two medium cargo... Uh, with two, is they medium or are they small? Two medium cargo cans after maybe, you know, from here to there twice. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's not enough space. So we may have to build the next sort of size um, mining craft up, which is going to be essentially another flying cargo can. But this time, probably based on something as, as large as we can get it. This is a large grid, large cargo can, so... If it's not a large ship, if it's a small ship, it's still going to be, um, it's still going to be, you have to use these kind of modules. But when we do that, we may have to start thinking about large thrusters instead of these little tiny ones. But I'll leave that for next, for another episode, not quite sure if it's the next one or not. And thank you very much for watching, as always, guys. It's been a pleasure. Feel free to like, subscribe, share if you'd like this episode, because a simple solar tracking done. And next episode, hopefully we'll see you back for more Space Engineers. Thanks for watching.